Constantine, what led you to this point in your career? I'm used to working with people in crisis, people in growth, working with people over an extended period of time and helping them set goals and meet goals find meaning, push and challenge people, and having having enough trust in our connection and our relationship. One of my biggest strengths is stepping into conflict in a productive way. Compassion and flexibility, constantly keeping the student's experience or my client's experience in mind, knowing that they're struggling and they're at a really hard moment in their life, meeting them where they were at. They have certain beliefs in themselves, limiting beliefs, reframing those beliefs, working with those but first, you, you can't hold someone to an expectation that's beyond what they believe that they're capable of. First, you have to meet them where they're at, acknowledge like, okay, this is, this is where your limit is, and just pushing slightly beyond that and helping them to take the steps to the greater picture, the bigger vision of your most ideal self three months from now, six months from now, five years from now. What does that look like? Really envisioning that and working backwards from that, creating a solid plan for how to get there. According to Constantine, what is a life coach and what do they do? You know, there are some things that are non-negotiable from that foundation. There are other pieces that you can you have more room to play with. Those core pieces are, number one, accountability, planning and clarity. A life coach helps with exploring that and exploring those pieces to get clear. This is what I want, good, questions to help someone see things differently and think about things differently than they would on their own. Life coaches don't have all the answers. My job as a life coach, the way that I see it is to ask really good clarifying questions, personal growth, relationship growth, career growth, whatever it is, I can help you explore some of that information and hold you accountable to that. The biggest reason I think people look for life coaching is because they don't see any way out of their current situation. The question that people always have is, how does a life coach differ from a therapist? And the simple, straight, easy answer is a therapist works with the past to reconcile with the present, and life coaches work with the present to reconcile with the future. I like to help my clients surrender to the process that's around them because we all work in our own environment, we have people that we surround ourselves with, and just kind of attuning to that and really letting that guide them instead of trying to force their way through their lives. I also really enjoy working with change, with transition. I've worked a lot with the Yi Jing, which is a 3,000 year old Chinese text, which translates to the Book of Changes. So I love when people are in a place of transition uh, stepping into that unknown, working with obscurity, finding a place of acceptance, because change is one of the most frustrating things for human beings. And building a relationship with that change, the internal and the external, exploring the light and dark parts of that. Like, okay, this, so working with my clients, like this stuff is coming up, this is new stuff. Things that you're not comfortable with, maybe you do like it, maybe you don't like it, maybe you haven't decided yet and finding ways to integrate that and parse out like this. No matter what happens, these are things that you can take with you from that experience. Everything can be a lesson. It's a matter of your relationship with it. Instead of outright rejecting it, outright resisting it, is there something here to look at? And so when I work with my clients, when we first start working together, I give them a document that I put together that draws from all of my different experiences and knowledge. It's called Coaching Foundations. We'll use that as a reference throughout our working relationship. Pick one or two of those things and we'll really dial in on those and we'll focus in on those. What motivates you to be a life coach? I don't know any other way to be. I love helping people. Right. For me, giving life meaning means helping other people. Like I am here to help people. Everything that I do with my clients, I. I do because it works for me, it has worked for me, it's pulled me out of dark places, it's helped me through hard times. A lot of it is research backed and it just, it objectively is helpful and I believe in it because it helps me and so I know it's gonna help my clients. And I've got this awareness that, you know, I wanna be safe, I wanna be comfortable. I wanna just go back to what I know. That's not what I set out to do. So just meeting all of this with a lot of acceptance. I can see the progression 
of change inside of me, how lost I was. I'm still searching. All of us are searching in some capacity and thank God because once the search is over, you just get bored. I don't remember what you asked me, but uh, yeah, there's your answer. How do you take care of yourself? Practicing self-compassion all the time. Acceptance, 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 trust, 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 belief, belief, belief. Which brings me to my spirituality. Taoism had as much or more of an impact than, than self-compassion did seven years ago for me. It just taught me to surrender. It taught me to accept. And being connected with something bigger than myself, it takes so much of the pressure off. What will be, will be. There are no mistakes and it works how it works. Throughout all of those negative or challenging emotions, there's a, an underlying current of acceptance that I didn't have before. And I am being taken where I need to go. Gratitude at every single meal, nightly affirmations. Find every single little thing that I can possibly affirm myself for and I literally fall asleep affirming myself. For the most ridiculous things, I try to love myself the way that a mother loves her toddler. You went to the bathroom today, good job. You tied your shoes, you got dressed, oh my God. How does journaling play a role in your life? I am an addict. Honestly, I'm not kidding. I feel like I can't process anything if I don't write it down. I'm not the only person writing in my journals. I believe that the world needs more vulnerability. It needs more openness. We have too much hiding, shame. We have too much isolation. We over-identify with our problems as if we're the only ones that are going through it and that no one else could understand. My approach to journaling, these are my problems. This is who I am. This is what's going through my head. This is what I think, this is what I feel, this is what I believe, and it is not shocking. It is not so different from what any other person is going through. I allow other people to read my journals, write in my journals, that life is a collaboration. This isn't just your life. This is all the people you surround yourself with. These are all the things that you're doing every single day, and it's not just your perspective. It's everyone's that's constantly building you and who you are. There's a famous quote, it takes a village, to raise a child. And of course we all carry within us our inner child, but it takes a village to raise a teenager, an adult, an elder. We are hardwired to be social creatures. And so the question becomes, who, who is your village? What is your village now? And especially in American society, we become more and more isolated as, as our life becomes more and more stable. We get married, we have kids, we have less and less friends we hang out with, and our, our circles become smaller and smaller, and we become less and less open to these other perspectives. We become more set and rigid, and there's not enough growth, there's not enough novelty and development in pushing who we are.